Then your Sports Center will be going for our next team prediction of this offseason, and it's going to be over the Duke Blue Devils, a team that went 9-4 and four overall in the 2022 season. This turned out to be one of the top teams in the ACC, and I don't think too many expected that, but definitely a successful first season under Mike Elko. But how this team be in 2023, and whether or not this team could potentially be a dark horse ACC contender in the 2023 season, as we'll be talking about here today. We'll be analyzing this team and break their schedule game by game in this video. Let's get started with a quick recap of 2022. Once again, a really successful season for this team. A really solid start. Yeah, beat Temple 30 to nothing in week one. That was on a Friday night, a nice shutout win there. Then uh, went to Northwestern, got a nice win there, 31 to 23. Beat North Carolina a and 49 to 20. So a 3 and 0 start. And then this team went to Kansas, which that Kansas game in week four was was pretty remarkable. You consider the uh, the implications of that game turned out to be much more significant than expected. Both teams undefeated heading into that game, and both teams definitely uh, surprise teams at that point in the season. Of course, Kansas and Duke, uh, both teams that heading into the season were considered to be uh, two of the worst in their conferences, so a huge game there. And Kansas ended up winning at 35-27, to and eventually Duke, you could say, was the better team in 2022, uh, but definitely a very interesting game that was. And then came back, beat Virginia 38-17, to then lost two games in a row here to Georgia Tech, and then North Carolina, both games being close. I mean, if you look at this team's losses last season, they took four losses, all four were within one score. This team never got blown out last season, and that's definitely something to keep in mind as we look forward to 2023. Um, then beat Miami, of course, on the road 45-21. to A couple of nice wins over Boston College and Virginia Tech. Lost to Pitt on the road 20 to 26 Another one of those close losses. Then beat Wake Forest 34-31. to Huge win there to finish out the regular season. Took on UCF in the Military Bowl after that, and a dominant win there in the military bowl to finish out the season 30 to 13 being the final so i mean this turned out to be a 9 and 4 team last season and you consider the expectations heading into the season this was a team that was expected to maybe get four or five wins tops and turns out uh, this was a nine win team and this is a team with some of the highest upside in the country looking forward to 2023 let's look at the ross preview now and riley leonard Big time name. He is emerging and he is he is definitely on the rise right now. Last season, 3,000 yards of passing, 20 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, a 64% completion rate. That is an impressive stat line for a passer. You also got to consider, though, he rushed for 700 yards last season and 13 touchdowns, the lead rusher for this team. He is a true dual threat quarterback and definitely a guy to keep an eye on looking forward to 2023. In this backfield as well, I mean, you got three running backs who uh, had over 500 yards each. I mean, Jordan Waters was the top with right around 700 yards of offense and eight touchdowns. Jalen Coleman and Jaquez Moore not too far behind. This is a backfield with depth. And that is definitely important going into 2023. And this receiving core as well, I mean, this is an offense that is really stacked all around. You look at Jalen Calhoun, uh, Jordan Moore, Samir Higgins, uh, even Eli Ponkul. I mean, this is a team that is stacked offensively, a lot of talent everywhere. And you lose two on the offensive line, but you're also bringing in a couple of guys, which should add some depth uh, from the transfer portal. So that's good. And defensively, too, this team is only losing three of their key playmakers, one linebacker, and then two in the secondary. I mean, this is a team with some of the best returning production in the country. I mean, this is a team that I like a lot, but I will say as well, we'll get into this in a second. This team does have a brutal schedule. You can't forget about that. And you know, once we get to the prediction, we'll talk a little more about that. But is this team a true ACC contender? Can this team be a true ACC contender? And I think so. I mean, your big three in the ACC are probably Clemson, Florida State, and it's kind of a tie for that third spot between North Carolina and Duke. I do think Duke is just as talented as, say, North Carolina. And honestly, upside-wise, Duke has, once again, some of the highest upside in the country. It's just if they can get it done in some of those big games this season, that's really what's going to be crucial for this team. But look at your transfer portal and recruiting now. This team hasn't been terribly active in the transfer portal, which can be a good thing. Really not too many key players leaving. Uh, Daryl Harding and Eric Weatherly both leaving. 
uh, both receivers really didn't have significant impacts on this team. Uh, ben Hoytink, offensive lineman, is coming in from Princeton. And then Jake Hornerbrooks coming in from Stanford. Rocky Shelton, linebacker, is off to Miami. And you bring in a couple of defensive backs uh, with Miles Jones and then Al Blades Jr. But you do lose Tony Davis, who's in the transfer portal. Recruiting wise, they're 56 in the country, 10th in the ACC. Not too bad. You got 26 three stars coming in. So. I mean, and you got to consider too, Duke isn't really known for being a big recruiting school. So, I mean, 10th in the ACC, yeah, it's bottom half in the conference. But, I mean, you got to consider this is a team that's known for, and Duke is known for basketball. They're similar to Kansas in that way. And uh, that's a big reason why that Kansas-Duke game was so interesting last season was because both teams were having a lot of early success last season, which is pretty rare. I mean, there's no hiding that. Duke, of course, being a team that was pretty good from 2012 to uh, 2018, nothing too crazy. Had a 10-win season in there. and But, I mean, you got to consider before, or, I mean, even 2019 to 2021 was terrible. But before 2012, this is a team that only made it to, what, one or two bowl games in, like, 50 years. So, it's this is a team that's not known for football. So, for this team to have... High expectations in football is definitely a significant thing. And considering this isn't a big recruiting school for football, I mean, this is a team that I've got a 7 out of 10 on the future forecast meter basically saying, I think this year is definitely a, a potential great season here for Duke. But for the future, after this season, when a lot of players start to leave for uh, different things and off to the NFL, I mean, this is a team that once in a while you're going to see a really good season. But I also think Mike Elko... Uh, being a coach that really showed potential in his first season with Duke. And if he can have another successful season in 2023 and stick around after that, this is a team that could definitely be a consistent ACC contender for years to come. And so it's very much dependent on the next couple of years here. But uh, it's definitely an interesting team. And with that, let's take a look at the schedule now as we look forward to 2023. And you start out with a huge matchup against Clemson at home. This is a massive game, a huge opportunity at home on a Monday night, last game of week one. I mean, this is, and Clemson is expected to return to national contention once again this season. So, I mean, a massive game there in week one. Then you got Lafayette week two, Northwestern week three at home, then off to UConn in week four. And then you got Notre Dame week five. I mean, this is not an easy schedule. This is a much more difficult schedule than last season. Uh, after your bye, you take on NC State at home, then Florida State. Expect them to be a national contender as well. Got to play them in Tallahassee. Then uh, got to play Louisville on the road. Wake Forest at home. North Carolina on the road. Then Virginia on the road. And then Pitt at home to finish out the regular season. So, I mean, yeah, there's no hiding it. This is a very difficult schedule. But the way Duke is built for this season, I definitely think this team uh, can make good work of it. Let's look at September now. Clemson, this is a matchup that is pretty much 50-50. It could definitely go either way. And if Duke can win that week one matchup at home, which is very much a possibility, I think. I mean, that just really sets up the season on a high note. And I mean, the next three games after that, very winnable. Lafayette, you beat them. And the Northwestern at home, Northwestern is in a tough situation right now. I think you take care of them, no problem. And then UConn on the road. It is a road matchup against a UConn team that is, I mean, they were halfway decent last year. I don't really think that continues in 2023, so I do think you beat them. Uh, but maybe a sneaky close matchup there. So you're 3-1 and one heading into the Notre Dame matchup, which Notre Dame next season, uh, they'll be a contender as well. I mean, you're playing multiple national contenders. This is probably the toughest schedule in the ACC. I'm pretty confident in saying that. I mean, Notre Dame in your non-conference, you got Northwestern, UConn on the road in your non-conference as well. It's very difficult. I mean, UConn, Northwestern uh, probably aren't going to be great, but they're also, I mean, Northwestern is a power five team, uh, but Notre Dame, you do lose to them. I just think they're too good of a football team, but I think you got a chance there. There's a chance to get a nice win there. And then NC State, I do think they fall off a little bit. I think you get a nice win here. You beat them by a couple of touchdowns. And then you got Florida State and Louisville both on the road. I do think you lose to Florida State, and I'm pretty confident in saying that. Florida State is going to be, they're going to be tough in 2023. That's a team with as much returning production as really anyone. They're going to be experienced, and they were really good in 2022. So uh, keep an eye on them. I think that's a tough one there. And uh, you drew dropped that one. And then Louisville on the road. I think Louisville next season could be decent. They are a beatable team, but coming off of a tough loss at Florida State, 
I think you drop that one to Louisville as well. So that puts you at four and four heading into November. You got Wake Forest at home. I do think they fall off a little bit as well. Um, so you get a nice win against Wake Forest. North Carolina on the road, another tough team. I do have this team losing five games this season, uh, all to pretty good opponents. But I do think at some point, I wouldn't be surprised if this team got up to eight wins and you know, maybe pulled off a massive win against Clemson or Notre Dame at home or you know, even Louisville. That's definitely a beatable team there. The one loss that I'm really most confident that this team takes is probably on the road to Florida State. I really don't think this team has uh, much of a chance there, I'm going to be honest. I mean, that's going to be a really tough environment, and Florida State is going to be playing some they're going to be playing some really good ball, I think, at that point in the season. So that's going to be really tough. But Virginia and Pitt then to finish out the season. I can win both these games. You get up to 7-5 and five on the regular season. So, I mean, it is. I mean, you were 8-4 and four at the end of the regular season last year. So, I mean, 7-5 and five seems like a decline in comparison to last season. But I'll say this again. This is, I mean, this is not an easy schedule. This is tougher than last year, far and away. I mean, this is going to be a challenge for this team. And, I mean, I think seven and five, if you can get up to seven and five, I mean, this could be maybe the best five loss team in the country if this is the case you know, heading into bowl season. And so, I mean, we'll see what this team can do. I definitely am confident that this team uh, gets it done, gets up to seven wins or so, but the ceiling is still high. I've got 10 and two for the ceiling. Uh, the four is five and seven in the case of this team disappoints a bit. Um, but the ceiling is once again, very high for this team. I've got pretty much as high of a ceiling on this team as uh as most teams around their level so i mean i definitely think duke's an interesting team a lot of talent on this team as well and this is one of those seasons where we really i mean duke usually doesn't have very high expectations heading into most seasons but if there's a season where this team can be a contender this would be the one but let me know your thoughts in the comments below on duke and i appreciate you guys all watching as always stay tuned for more from all sports central catch you on the next one